Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 4! And in this episode of our season as Joey Logano, we're going to be completing race 3 of 36, which is the Pennzoil 400 at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, presented by Jiffy Lube. In the last episode, we raced at Atlanta, where we finished in 7th place. I spun the car onto pit road during green flag pit stops because I was not aware that that was actually going to be happening. Though I should be at this point because the cup races are so much longer. I should be always ready. So from now on, when we have green flag stops, I will not mess up. I will nail it. I will do perfect. I, I promise that, but it's that's probably not even going to actually happen. So we're going to go to the season standings. And as you can see, we're going to use the plain yellow car because that's the one that Joey Logano has been using at Las Vegas for the past couple of years. So here's the point standings. We're 14 points in front of Martin Trex Jr. Harvick is in third, Denny Hamlin's fourth, Keselowski fifth, and Eric Jones won Atlanta, and he is in sixth place right now. The walls are yellow, the car is yellow. This is what you get whenever things are all sponsored by Pennzoil. This track I don't recall being that good at, but I can tell you this much. Whenever your tires are worn, your car can get pretty freaking loose. Hopefully it's not like crazy loose, as I've experienced in the past. And also, I just learned recently that this straightaway is called the Nellis straightaway. Nellis straight away. I, I went my entire life without actually knowing that fact. And I don't know why the backstretch has a name. But I put it on like plus two loose setup because I want to have a bunch of grip and qualifying. And we were just half a second off the pole time. So yeah, it was a good idea. But I'm going to want to put it back onto a default setup to tighten it up because it'll get loose and it'll be a problem on more tires. Pole sitter is Alex Bowman and Brad Kozlowski is going to be starting in second. There's Truex third, Almarola fourth. Um, what about my teammates? Because we already see Keselowski up there. But what about 21? And Ryan Blaney's in 18th, and Paul Menard will be starting in 21st. So we're just gonna pay attention to my teammates and any of the big drivers. I am now starting in eighth. Someone got sent to the back. I did not change my preset back to the default one. Oh shit! <laughs> so we're gonna have a really loose car on worn tires. This is fantastic. Matt Tiff posted some fast laps in practice. And Daniel Suarez got an engine change, so yeah, he was in front of us, and now he's in the back. Daniel Suarez, his career has really fallen apart since he won his championship in the Xfinity Series. Because he came into the Cup Series, and he did okay. Uh, doing okay is not good in Joe Gibbs' equipment. He had that 19 car. So they put him in the 41 car, and he did okay there too. Which is still not okay that he's just doing okay. And now he's driving the freaking 96 car, not even running a full season. It, it's kind of sad that they just let him win an Xfinity Series championship and then Todd off him in the Cup Series like he, he really is ready for that. But I mean, if you look at him, he looks like he's old enough to be a Cup driver. And he is, all the young guns back in 15 years ago, the same age as Daniel Suarez and Chase Elliott, Kyle Larson, Austin Dillon, whoever else, these young guns these days. But they, they were accomplishing so much more. Like, I mean, think about it. Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman, all these guys that were so young, they were, like, being championship contenders and winning a bunch of races. And, like, they don't do that. It's, it's strange. It's like they all just get brushed up from the, the Xfinity series instead of actually proving that they have cup talent. you got to build that shit up. You can't just win a championship and then tot out your cup driver. I mean, if you're in, like, the lower series, and yeah, you win a truck series championship, then go ahead, go with the Xfinity series, you probably have the same talent. So, we got nine laps in stage, and I'm working my way to the bottom. And me making my car this loose is actually really giving me some grip on the bottom. To be honest, if I were to have put it on, like, one of the default setups, I wouldn't be as fast if I'm just looking back on races before this track. But, yeah, after about three laps, is where you see me starting to slow down, and I'm kind of neck and neck with everybody. I would like to stay in the draft of Kyle Busch, but he's running the outside, and Kyle Reg's getting a run. Kyle Larson's getting a run. These guys have so much more straightaway speed than me. Like, this is... This car is supposed to be able to win at this track. Look how much straightaway speed these guys have on me right now. And then they keep on touching my quarter panels. I should be getting wrecked, but you touch the quarter panels in the car, and that doesn't wreck it. And the AI, you can touch any part of their car, and they'll start spinning, as you can see right there with Chase Elliott. So I'm stuck on the outside right now. I gotta be honest, um, getting into the Cup Series and having these long green flag runs is something I've been waiting for because I like just being in the race, having some racing instead of just depending on stages and restarts. You can see me pass cars and then get passed by way more cars than I ever passed purely 
because that's just what Tyler can do to us. Wish I'd run the whole game like this, not bother with the more effect Tyler thing, because it didn't show very much balance. To be honest, I mean, this puts me up against a bigger test. I still might be able to win the championship despite how hard this might be, though. I'm just trying to hold on, and I am sitting in ninth for the past few laps. Past Chase Elliott, really gripping the bottom, trying to sit underneath Eric Almarola. Side draft him a little. Got the draft of Harvey. The car's getting loose, so it's keeping me from being behind him. I'm making it stick. Trying to get into seventh. I completely overdrove through three, though. No, Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman, you start on the pole. How the hell did you get back here? That That's a very good question. He started on the pole. What the fuck? <laughs> did, did I miss that? We're still ninth. It's loose, so it's just sliding into the corners. Look at this car go. Man, I'm going to bowl these tires next day, to tell you that much. Oh, boy. It's doing that thing. I, I told you I should have. I should have put the preset back. It was good while it lasted, you know, being able to fly past cars, but it's not good anymore. I just need to be a lot more diligent coming off the corners whenever it comes to steering. We should be fine. Like, I'm not even steering for a whole two seconds. The damn thing won't stop. No. Protect the bottom. I'll get around me on the outside. It'll take a while, but protect the bottom. I, I can't even reach the bottom. I can't do that. Either. Even though I was already at the bottom, I couldn't get there. That's a strange statement. I'm sorry, Alex Bowen, but that's just what my car does. It, it's, it'll keep steering until the end of time. And we're just going to slide all over the damn place. This is a terrible setup for a, a long run. It's only good for like four or five laps. Please, please, please fucking stop steering whenever I ask you to, car. Oh my god. I can't drive this thing anymore. I like to take a pit stop. We taking pit stops, AI? Sugar's sure, in the stages in Atlanta led us to the same thing. Yeah, okay, pit stops. My right side tires are in terrible condition. My left side tires are in terrible condition, so this is this is great. Um, I'm gonna add two rounds of wedge. I don't know if that's gonna solve the problem though, because it's like there's so much things I have to do to the tire pressure to probably get it where I want it to, and there's other things in the setup with the, the presets that probably won't solve the problem. We'll get our four tires, there's no damage repair, surprisingly. And we'll fill up the tank. And I am still in 12. Well, I don't think we're going to be as good on this restart as we were the last one, but we've got fresh tires. So I should be able to do some of the same things. We started ninth, so I lost positions in that state. Um, is there a setup where your tires don't kill you? but you still get lots of, of, of grip? That's that's what the question is. I need to, to make a setup for longer runs for pretty much every track. Because most tracks are like this. The Las Vegas especially, it's bumpy and it's loose on worn tires. But it'd be a problem if I have no way to actually solve this so I don't lose positions every single time we get five laps into a 10 lap stage. I lose more positions on worn tires than I gain on fresh. I'm sorry that I did that. I'm just trying to angle my corner good. Keep up with these guys. Got a side-by-side -side battle for the lead again with uh, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin on the outside. I think Kyle Busch is going to get this one because he's going to be in the inside three. Yeah, there he goes. Took it off the throttle. I barely touched the apron, so it wasn't too bad. You can see on the map, Kyle Busch is now the leader. I'm not trying to do that. I'm I'm just trying to feel the, the track and, and get a good entry, but I can't do that whenever you stay to my outside for three laps straight. Okay, and now Matt Tift is in eighth place. That is strange. Where is Matt Tift going? Well, I I got past Kozlowski, and now I have to give the position back because my car isn't good enough to maintain that. I was thinking maybe I'd get past Matt Tift because he's driving weird here. That doesn't seem to be happening either. Okay, you send it in there. There we go. I'm trying to pull up in front of him. I'm trying to, like, drive all the way up in front of him and then stop. And then claim the position. Like, a slide job, even though we're not sliding at all. I'm going to send it under McDowell. I'm going to get both these positions back. Come on. No Bowman. And a caution comes out, so we were in front of Michael McDowell, but that just puts me on the outside. 
that will not end the stage early. Oof. I don't know what the caution was for. Maybe someone pitted behind us and we'll see them preparing damage. Maybe somebody blew up. Uh, Brendan Gaughan's pitting, so probably Brendan Gaughan, something happened to him. Uh, how many laps are left in the stage? Hopefully we... It didn't say that we finished stage two. I know that much, so we probably got like two laps or three laps. Now we have two laps left in the second stage of the race. We usually have good restarts in this one. So, could get some spots, get some stage points. We're not up to speed yet. We have the draft. Once we're up to speed, that's where we start tightening up. So, that's my biggest concern. I'm trying. They just had a big gap on us as soon as the freaking restart came, to be honest. No, you guys are not passing me. No. No. No! Bad! Bad McDowell! You little bitch! You passed me! Bitch! Damn it, you. Fucking McDowell. I, I'm i gonna be like this all freaking season long because I don't have them so that their tires actually show that they're worn. Like, they don't get worn. I My tires wear down. But theirs, they do not. I don't feel like we were even that fast whenever we started the stage. We started the first stage, we were fast because I had a loose car. But then it was terrible because it gets even looser on worn tires. But now, I just feel slower as the tires get worn. So, we're gonna take one round of wedge out. So it should be a little loose, but not too loose, I hope. And we'll fill up the tank of gas. Get our four tires. So, I didn't lose our game positions. We're still 10th, right where we were at the last restart. How many laps we got in the final stage? And it is getting later in the race now. I think that's like 13 laps. Oh, that's 12 laps. It was 13 laps before we got to the point. So, close enough. So this time, should have a good restart. Last me, you know, four laps or so, passing some cars. And then try not to lose too much ground. Um, and I think we have enough gas to finish the stage, too. Because it said like 15 laps left and then 15 laps on fuel. And then we just skip some laps into the caution. So, hmm, no green flag pit stops. But, I mean, the caution might come out, and I don't know if we're going to take a pit stop under that. I think I, I will if, if the AI deem it necessary for, like, tires or something. But I can't even imagine them pitting with the amount of fuel that we just had right there. Also, Matt Tip is still up here, and he's running sick. What, what, why? Why is this happening? This is, this is weird. This is just weird. First, Brandon Jones winning races, and then Matt Tip is over here in the 36 fucking car. And he's in the top six at Las Vegas in the Cup Series. This is the Cup Series. Matt Tip is doing this right now. What is why? I'm what? Okay. So ten to go. And then I'm just gonna hang behind Matt Tiff so I can keep up. It's, it's really hard to keep up with Matt Tiff when you're Joey Logano because this is the reality that we're living in right now. Oh my gosh, this track is bumping with what the car's doing. Outside lane is not exactly that fast. You can see them having to check up for each other and it's already not fast enough, so I should be able to pass some guys right here. I'm going. Oh, and I didn't bounce off the apron. I ran a perfect entry right there. I'm trying to make it work. And they got a runoff. Man, even though I took a round of wedge out, I don't feel like really that fast. They're going way to the outside. They send it hard. There we go. That was a slide jump. That was an actual legitimate slide jump. I did it. I didn't hit the wall. I, I did it. And it got done. So maybe we can find out if someone's pitting. Does someone wreck? Um, they, they're not telling us anything. I can't pit because we've got enough fuel for the end and no one else is pitting. I'll just be at the back of the field. I wouldn't even be able to pass enough cars with fresher tires to make up for it. I think we're better off just staying out and losing some positions. But can we please have a good restart? Uh, looks like Harvick is beating me on this one. You know, like kind of side drafting even though we're not really up to speed. Probably should have just pulled behind him. What are you doing? Oh my gosh, Harvick is having some reactions to to some of them on the track. I don't know what the hell that was. Got a draft. Come on, pull me past him. Pull me past Matt Tiff. Nope, that didn't work. Well, let's get Harvick instead, right? Yeah, we got Harvick. We'll, we'll lose it to Tiff. 
and then more cars are passing me. Golly, your car is so terrible in this game. It's just blatantly not as good as theirs. The lower the difficulty, so we're all equal. Or put it on more effect with the tires again. But that's the thing is like I, I wish that was just balanced like NASCAR Heat 2 was, where you feel like you have the same car as them, and you also have the same chance on your tires as your points too. It's just it's hard to find that in this game. It's still better than NASCAR Heat 3, I give them that much. Like they're they're not that superior with their tires. But they still are. I'm trying to, to stay in front of somebody. I don't have enough grip to hold the bottom. And whenever I'm drafting off of somebody, it doesn't pull me ahead of someone that's coming to my inside. Okay. I'm all over Harvard's bumper. I'm trying to do something. And here comes Eric Jones. I'm doing everything I can. This race is actually almost over. About to come to two to go. Gonna get top ten, maybe. And instead I'm bouncing off the apron. Why? Well, why can't I just not suck? That would be great. Well, there's the white flag. Gotta block these two guys for one more lap. I feel like Warren Tires never come in for my opponents. And it just slid right out of them, Chase Elliott's way. And I, I have two lanes of traffic blocked. Well, McDowell's dead because I'm doing such a great job blocking him. And that will end the race under caution. So we still finished outside the top 10. Almarola got past us. So that is 11th place. <sighs> Denny Hamlin won a stage and won the race. That happens in real life. That is a thing. That actually happens whenever you watch NASCAR. He, he wins things. Matt Tiff finished in fourth. Tyler Reddick finished fifth and won a stage. That does not happen. If you ever watch NASCAR on TV, you tune into the Cup Series. That shit just doesn't happen. But this game is fucking with me, I swear to God. It's fucking with me. We finished 11th place. That was not a good race. But at the same time, as I said, it, it wasn't bad. It, it was just an okay race. But we got to do something about how awful this car is. That performance that we just had drops us down to third place in the standings, but we're only 10 points behind Martin Truex Jr. The thing is, we can expect to lose a bunch of ground in the next race because that's Phoenix. I'm usually okay at Phoenix whenever the AI have more tire wear effect, but that's that's okay. So now it's on normal, so that means we're we're probably be very bad. I'm going to finish 20th or something that race next week in the Ticket Guardian 500 at ISM Raceway. At Phoenix Raceway, this game seems very conflicted. Uh, Eric Jones, still sixth with, with his win. And then Denny Hamlin, he's got the other win. So these three drivers are the ones locking the playoffs. Me, Hamlin, Jones. Tyler Reddick is now in eighth. Oh, my gosh. Now, I thought it would be a little shooken out by now. A couple races in, not a super speedway races. We see regular drivers up front, but we keep on seeing Tyler Reddick doing well. And then freaking Matt tipped over there. And I guess Eric Jones didn't do too bad in the last race, but that's not too surprising. But Tyler Reddick, he's still hanging on to this shit. But for the most part, the top 10, it's still looking you know, really good actual cup drivers up there. I'm going to be using the auto trader paint scheme at Phoenix because this car is orange and blue. And I feel like orange and blue are good colors for Phoenix. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with some good reason to use a different paint scheme every race. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.